In this section, we're going to solidify the connection between electrochemistry and chemical thermodynamics relating cell potential to free energy and the equilibrium constant. So this is going to really help us see how electrochemistry on some level is an application of chemical equilibrium and chemical thermodynamics. So to begin with this, let's remind ourselves what the change in free energy under standard conditions, the standard free energy change, is for a process. It's the maximum amount of work that can be done by a system starting from the standard state and proceeding to equilibrium. And here we're assuming the system proceeds spontaneously, let's say from reactants to products in a chemical reaction. And so delta G naught here, the standard free energy change is equal to W max, the maximum amount of work that that chemical system can do. Now in a galvanic cell, this corresponds to electrical work. This is moving charges, moving electrons through a wire or through some other kind of electrical load, right? And so we think here about the spontaneous redox reaction in the context of electrochemistry doing work on the surroundings, doing work on a connected external circuit that represents an electrical load. Now what is electrical work? Well, in a redox reaction we're moving in moles of electrons through a potential difference that corresponds to E0 cell, the standard cell potential. And so the electrical work, W elect, is equal to the charge times the potential difference. And we saw this earlier when we defined potential difference as the ratio of energy or work to charge. This is just that equation sort of rearranged. Now, in moles of electrons have a charge in coulombs that corresponds to the charge in coulombs of a mole of electrons times n, the number of electrons involved. And that charge in a mole of electrons is constant, right? It's the elementary charge times Avogadro's number, and this has a value known as Faraday's constant, and it's 96,485 coulombs per mole. We'll use this number a lot in converting, quote-unquote, from cell potentials to free energy change and vice versa. Let's take a moment now to return to our picture of charge moving through a potential difference in a galvanic cell. So what happens spontaneously in a galvanic cell is that the negatively charged electrons with a charge of negative NF move from a lower potential to a higher potential spontaneously from the anode to the cathode at higher potential. And this potential difference is the difference in the standard reduction potentials between the cathode and the anode. And so the energy associated with this is the magnitude of the charge that moves, Faraday's constant times n with the negative sign because electrons are negatively charged, times the potential difference, which is E0 for the cathode minus E0 for the anode. And so for a galvanic cell or spontaneous redox reaction at standard state, delta G0 is equal to negative n times F times E0 cell. This also works for non-spontaneous redox reactions, in fact. However, in that case, delta G will be positive and E0 cell will be negative as a result of this negative sign. So this equation applies whether the redox reaction is spontaneous or non-spontaneous, and we're going to take advantage of that when we calculate cell potentials for hypothetical galvanic cells to appreciate whether a given redox reaction will be spontaneous or non-spontaneous. And so notice that when the sign of delta G naught is negative, E naught cell is positive, and vice versa. When the sign of delta G naught is positive, E naught cell is negative. And so the case listed here with delta G naught negative and E naught cell positive corresponds to a spontaneous redox reaction, and naturally the opposite combination with delta G naught positive and E naught cell negative corresponds to a non-spontaneous redox reaction. This is nice. So now we can essentially use E0 cell as a stand-in for the free energy change delta G0. Conceptually, the two are related. They're related just by a pretty simple scaling factor, the amount of charge transferred in, in one mole of the redox reaction, negative N times F, where N is that number of moles of electrons transferred. To understand how the equilibrium constant fits into all this, we're going to need to think back to the law of mass action and the relationship between delta G0 and K the equilibrium constant. Recall from those discussions of chemical thermodynamics that delta G naught is equal to negative R, the ideal gas constant, times the temperature in Kelvin times the natural log of K, the equilibrium constant. But from the last slide, 
we also saw another expression that delta g naught is equal to, negative n times f times e naught cell. So we can combine these two equations to create a new equation that relates e naught cell to k. Negative n times f, Faraday's constant, times e naught cell, is equal to negative rt times the natural log of k. And an equivalent form of this is k is equal to e to the power of nf divided by rt times e cell. So this shows, for instance, that a unit change in e naught cell causes an exponential change in the equilibrium constant. So small changes in the voltage of a galvanic cell lead to huge swings in the value of k. And here's a graph that just depicts this with the value of k on the y-axis and e naught cell on the x-axis. When e naught cell is still relatively small, just a few volts, the magnitude of k gets very, very, very large. For the redox reaction, much, much greater than one. And of course, when E0 cell is equal to zero in something like a galvanic cell at equilibrium, the value of K corresponds to one. In practice, this means a galvanic cell can't really be associated with a voltage more than about five volts or so, because once you get beyond about five volts, you're looking at an extremely, extremely favorable redox reaction with a very, very high K value and our assumptions of ideality and all of the idealness that comes along with chemical thermodynamics starts to break down. This slide just shows a triangle of the relationships we've developed so far between the equilibrium constant K, the top here, the standard free energy change, delta G naught, and the standard cell potential E naught cell. And I won't go through these equations in detail, I'll just note that all of these are relations we've developed already. Delta G naught is equal to negative RT natural log of K, came from earlier discussions of chemical thermodynamics. This equation at the bottom came from a couple of slides ago, and this equation came from the last slide where we, we related E naught cell to the value of the equilibrium constant for the redox reaction in a, in a galvanic or electrolytic cell.